Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in today's video I will continue with the series about the book The Money Game and Beyond. All right, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss some interesting ideas that people suggested um, about how to organize societies. So we will continue with the second chapter. And um, yeah, in the first chapter, we learned how trade came into existence and how it influenced people all over the world how it changes values um, and distorts people's values. Um, and yeah, trade is not some kind of creature that can be quarantined, but it's rather a type of environment that hugely influences human behavior. And that's what we can see um, all over the world. And also, yeah, I mean, we can see that it influences human behavior in a quite negative way because yeah all the problems are created by humans okay what pushes humans to create these problems and this is that trade environment so um, different people suggested different ideas we will um, check out the most noticeable ones and yeah the world is not as simple as okay we figured out that trade is the problem let's just get rid of trade um, because the world is complex, the world is so big and um, it's not that easy to <laughs> change the world. So um, we really need to understand, okay, what worked in the past and what didn't work um, so that we can really move forward and make this trade game obsolete. Um, we are now trying to divide these systems of organizing clusters of people into the means of production and distribution, ideologies and a combination of both that results in a government and thus an economy. So and this cluster is about um, how the production of goods and services changes how ideologies form and thus how systems of organizing societies emerge and how they are managed. You know, um, we had the era of hunter and gatherers where people lived in small clusters, basically. And then by the advent of um, farming, things get much more complicated. You know, people are specialized in one thing. Other people are specialized in another thing. Um, some doing this, some doing that. We also need to deal with surpluses of food stuff, decision making and so on. As such societies emerged, inequalities among tribal members became more and more obvious and one such example is about how women became more and more subordinate to men. And we have this um, social stratification not only between women and men, but also between different cultures and different groups of people. So with that in mind, we will see how different ideals were formed and what they proposed for organizing a society. And to help make better sense of them, we will imagine that people are colonizing on Mars. It's gonna be very interesting. So imagine we, um, like human beings, a couple thousands or millions, um, went to Mars and now they are thinking, okay, how can we organize ourselves on Mars? Of course, we need to make sure that um, the um, atmosphere is stable and that we can like grow vegetables and so on. So it's just to help make better sense of these ideas. So as you can see here, these are the people on Mars and they are trying to figure out how to organize themselves. And these are people with different ideas and that's feudalism. And he is proposing to have kings who own the land. And then um, the kings can also um, allow multiple others which are called lords and the lords um, help to manage sections of their land and then um, he is proposing we need some people who will protect these areas that the kings and lords own these people protect the land and get something in return such as goods and services and then he is also proposing we need the rest of the people to work the land and produce goods and services we all need 
They work for the king and his lords, are protected by the land protectors and in return get to have access to their basic needs. He is continuing with, however, the ones working the land and the ones protecting the land should forever keep their statuses. Thus, they will never become lords or kings. They will inherit these statuses over generations and are bound to respect them, or else the king would punish them, as the king is the one making all the decisions. How does that sound? And then imperialism and colonialism are basically agreeing. That's an awesome idea. I must add though, since there will be so many groups of people here on Mars, we must work to conquer them with our armies. So we need to become strong, have a powerful army and be fearless. Then colonialism says, oh man, we really think alike. Imagine all of the weaker populations out there that we can conquer and force to adopt our values, thus making us even stronger and stronger in numbers. Authoritarianism and totalitarianism basically totally agree with these guys, but what authoritarianism adds is basically that the king leader must control all aspects of society. The science, arts, education, what goods are being produced, what services are allowed and so on. We need the leader to decide for all of us or well for you Martians. And they look like, okay, what the fuck, we should have a king who like basically decides everything. Um, yeah, I think that's not a good idea, is it? Then capitalism comes and he says, nah, hold on. That's completely unfair and quite non-progressive. All people should be able to own land and do their own business. This way, the best products and services get to be made through competition. If you do not allow those who work the land or those who protect it to lift their statuses, then you create a stagnant society where people won't be motivated to continually improve the society. Can't you realize that? And then democracy says, and they should all be able to vote for who will be their king or even what rights they should have. The people must be in power. And then fascism says, oh man, you two are so naive. People have no good judgment, no moral capacity. People cannot be in power. Those in power must decide how the society should be run. While I agree with capitalism to some degree that people should make their own businesses and own parts of Mars, I also agree with the other ones in that the power should stay at the top and the nationality of a group should be kept even expanded to other tribes through army control. But I might slightly disagree with authoritarianism and totalitarianism as to whom should lead the society. I think it's better to be led by a group of people, let's call them politicians, rather than just one guy, a king or a dictator. And then capitalism argues, well, to be honest, I agree with all of you as long as people can own parts of Mars and make a business out of it. <laughs> I know you all have your own rules as to what people can say, what they can wear, how education should be handled, how they should run their businesses, you have taxes and laws and so on. But I don't care as long as we let them compete in one way or another for producing and improving goods and services. Now free market comes in and he says, oh capitalism, I am only going to agree with you if leaders have nothing to say about how people run their businesses. And then socialism comes in and he says, look free market, if you base everything on letting people compete for their education, goods, services or whatever, you will create a huge disparity of classes. Some will be very rich, some so poor that they cannot even afford food. Imagine the exploitation of poor people. I think it's better to provide the basic needs of people in an equal manner, for free, as part of the economy and directed by the leaders. In this way, we do not promote profit over such services, but instead base our production and services on their actual use and need. So the money that workers make should be given back to them, mostly not to others. We need fairness and that can only be achieved if leaders control a good part of how society is run and use the gains to provide free services for their people. 
Now communism comes in and he says, while I mostly agree with socialism, it's rather naive to think that tweaking the ideas of capitalism will work. We need to get rid of the notion of working for anything. Men should be free, no social classes should ever exist, we need to eliminate the notion of property altogether. No one should lead a man but himself. Groups of people will eventually know and decide for themselves as to what they have to produce and when and how to distribute them. We need to eliminate scarcity and produce abundance. I see socialism as a path to communism from a capitalist society. And then capitalism says you guys are starting to look either like authoritarianism or utopia. But then communism argues and you capitalism start to look more and more like feudalism, where people get to be enslaved by others even for their basic needs. And even if in theory you say all people can uplift their status by allowing them to own parts of Mars and make businesses, this will hardly prove to be true as those who accumulate more will faster accumulate even more and the poor will have no choice but to work for them. That's exploitation and it can never lead to a peaceful society. And then anarchism comes in and he says, I think we have to keep an eye on all of these people. I don't have a plan as to how we can organize you Martians but I would say you must be skeptical of all of them when it comes about your personal freedoms. Now the little kid says, wait a minute, where did you guys come up with all of these ideas? And then an old Martian says, oh, let me explain that to you kid, because in order to understand the details of their approaches, you first need to understand how they came into existence and how they were tested and implemented on planet Earth. Let's head inside the Virtual History Museum. So now on Earth and in practice. Here it says that throughout human history there have been so many ideas and we could divide them into two categories based upon their control mechanisms. One is about people being free to do whatever the heck they want, yet you need to kind of control certain parts of the society. And the second is about guiding people on what to do and then leave them alone, one way or another, afterwards. So the old Martian dude says, the system of feudalism, where the distribution of goods, services and privileges is based primarily on a few owning everything, while the rest work like slaves, found itself being replaced some 400 years ago with the idea that people should be able to own stuff, as well as the means of production or the right to sell services and to make a business out of it. They called it capitalism. We should start from there to see how such ideas evolved on planet Earth, especially what they tried to ac accomplish, where they succeeded and where they failed. So this is about that capitalism sounded really good as an idea, as an abolition of the stagnant society of owners and slaves, but it didn't end up so well for the people. I mean, on the one side, we had an explosion of the manufacturing of goods and services with wide variety of colors, shapes, utilities, also nonsensical products, etc. Which resulted in creating a breed of people who felt compelled to any silly thing that others were able to persuade them to buy because it was like, okay, we are producing so much stuff, so we need people to buy that stuff, so we want to turn them into consumers. Um, and yeah, it was then thought that this system would empower people, but it turned out that the power again shifted towards a few, the owners, while the rest either worked for those few rich people or suffered the consequences of living with insufficient life support. You see, the core and most basic goal of capitalism is profit, that's all. It doesn't matter if people are run by a dictator, a moron like Angela Merkel or Donald Trump or Joe Biden or any, any leader in today's world or a saint as long as the society works by allowing people to compete and seek profit under certain circumstances within the laws. This system is not much better at dividing people into classes than feudalism. 
But it does something else that is very, very important. It blames the worker for his or her unsuccessful life. If you can't make a living, then you are at fault, not the system. Thus, deflecting people's rage mainly towards themselves rather than at someone else like the kings in feudalism. And I think this is a very important point because if you're not successful in terms of what society defines as success, like for example having a career where you make a lot of money or having a car or a big house, um, if you don't have that you might think okay something is wrong with me or I might be not smart enough or good enough to make it in this society. So it puts the blame on people themselves but I think this is completely fucked up. It's like yeah it's never your fault it's always the the like circumstances you know in the past they could say okay um like things are fucked up so it's the king you know and they put the blame on the king um, because he's the one who has the most power and in today's world you might be inclined to say okay i mean jeff bezos has like billions of dollars and bill gates have has so much money so you could put the blame on them but like who pushed them to be like that and this is this trade environment that we are talking about. So yeah, if you put blame on yourselves because you are not successful in terms of what society defines as success, um, then y you should not do that. It's our society is fucked up and that's the way it is. And you should not give a shit about society and you should try to be happy and um, do whatever the fuck you want, to be honest. When a culture is focused on profit, people's lives are put at risk as their needs are ignored, the environment is ransacked and the people's values and lives are changed forever. The capitalism system has had many rules applied to it, but its core idea of people owning and selling their own services within a profit-driven society is still present today in nearly all tribes across planet earth and for the sake of it i want to show you um the mercedes-benz strategy uh, from last year um i, I just stumbled uh, upon it um yesterday and i just i had to laugh about it <laughs> because it's so ridiculous i mean <laughs> And look at this guy, we are living in a time with a mass extinction of species and plants and we have climate change, we have social inequality, we have all the environment pollution and all the plastic pollution in the oceans and so on. And this guy is standing there having a presentation and talking about their main focus is profit. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? This is a perfect example of how distorted people's values are. They are just morons. That's all they are. They are idiots. They don't know what they're doing. They just, their focus is on money, not about caring about the environment or um, caring about people all they want is just to sell more cars that's it and they do it um, by creating more fancy cars um, with a lot of features and a lot of technology but in the end it's just a fucking car and that's it and for the future I would not want to have a car I just want to get from one place to another in a certain amount of time and it doesn't matter if it's by a car an autonomous car or by a train or by a bus or by whatever but I don't want to fucking own a, luxur a luxurious car and that's what these guys want to sell so yeah just don't waste time with that it's, I just thought it's interesting to show and what I also want to mention is that Mercedes-Benz is located in Stuttgart and I'm coming from this area actually, from the south of Germany and I know Stuttgart, I've been there a couple times so yeah, all of these people who work for Mercedes-Benz they are also just slaves um, enslaved by the capitalism system 
and um, yeah like engineering a special car <laughs> but I mean do have you ever thought about how many cars we have on planet earth don't we have enough cars is there do we need more cars like yeah whatever it's just these guys they are just moderns so um yeah with by continuing um this is about a free market is not really free because for example i could not say okay i want to sell dog meat now um because there are always some rules some laws and um, some circumstances or conditions um, when to be able to sell product so here the old martian guy says um, when he was younger on planet earth he had an unlimited internet connection and he took advantage of that but then um, after like 20 days his account got locked up with a message saying i'm sorry but you exceeded the bandwidth limit because there was a small disclaimer and i mean you might be familiar with that disclaimer right it says okay this product is this and this and this subscription is allows you to do that and that but then there is a small disclaimer and this means like okay you are allowed to do that but not really because we are fucking with you right <laughs> So yeah, keep this in mind. Whenever you hear um, of profit over human life and the environment, that is a reflection of the power of profit. That's the essence of capitalism and the free disclaimer market at work. The core idea of capitalism is so ridiculous that encouraging wars can be viewed as a great business plan as it reduces unemployment and creates profits for many already wealthy people. A very influential economist once jokingly proposed that for a nation to get out of depression they should hire people to demolish the nation and then to build it up again as it would create jobs and make the market run. I hope you're getting it now. So the kid says yeah I think I get it it's it's quite fucked up but if it's not free and it creates so many issues why has it become so widely adopted? And then um, the old Martian says, well, the idea of allowing individual humans under certain circumstances to make their own businesses became widely adopted for several reasons. For everyone involved, it replaced a non-progressive and very coercive system, feudalism. So it looked really good when compared to what they were moving away from. For the governments, it places the credit and blame on each individual. So if some do not succeed, there is no king they can overthrow to change the system. So it's like an evil that you can't recognize, but you sure can feel its effects. It was quite successful at creating a plethora of technologies, services and goods, as it transformed people into market addicts. So they didn't need any real plan to organize them. Just let them buy and sell and then they inserted various rules and regulations into that market for whatever reasons, personal gains, stabilize it, etc. That leads to point four. It's a highly flexible financial system that has little to do with any real organization of society because it only says that people can create their own businesses, that's all. So it was readily adopted under so many different kinds of regimes, from dictatorships one tribe member who controls the entire population through his own personal values to a widely varied mix of democracies. We'll get back to this capitalism again, kid, but first let me explain its enemy a bit, another kind of system that was designed to control people at first and then let it loose, as it will work on its own to create an equal society, devoid of profit motive. The kid says, okay, just a side note, I forgot to mention that I find feudalism, totalitarianism, imperialism and the like to be completely obsolete and unacceptable. And then the old Martian guy says, I agree, but let's keep moving. You might appreciate some of the alternatives that some people proposed within this period of time. So it will be about socialism. And there was a guy who was called Robert Owen 
and we will discuss what he proposed um, around 200 years ago in the next video because I think it's enough for um, today's video. So basically the point um, of these pages was that um, like feudalism, totalitarianism, they are like outdated ideas. They are not, I don't want to have a king who, who like says or tells me what to do. And I think you also don't want to have a dictator who tells you what to do. Um, I think this is just completely retarded and um, yeah. So in the next video we will discuss socialism and we will meet the guy who proposed it, Robert Owen. So then I hope you found this video interesting. See you then in the next video and as always take care and much love.